Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. You know, this year we've been working through our models. Now, I told you I'm a visual person, so I always like to build models so I can look at them and think about what that really means. I use them to coach myself. And I want to tell you, you really have to coach yourself. I don't care if you're the CEO or you're a general or an admiral, you've still got to coach yourself to continue to grow and to adapt. We all have to adapt. Great leaders adapt to the different situations. So coach yourself. And I just want to, you know, I want to mention that again. I've just reviewed a book and wrote the endorsement for Coachability for my friend Dane Deutsch. It'll be out next month. The Coachability, the Trike Effect, the Tricycle Effect he's written before, but this time it's about coachability and it's wonderful coaching yourself. Well, today we're going to help you coach yourself, and I want to work through chapter nine in the Engage with Honor book, Building a Culture of Courageous Accountability. Now, we've been working through the Courageous Accountability model graphic, and uh, we're working with that today. And so collaboration is so important. You know, collaboration from a leadership point, you have uh, an opportunity to create a culture of collaboration. And a culture of collaboration is going to be so much more effective. So for that, I, what I have learned and what is covered in that chapter is you have to reflect. You have to pause and you're so busy, you've got to sit down and pause and just reflect on each area of your domain and reflect up, reflect down. But especially here, we're talking about reflecting down and what is each one of your people doing have you talked to them lately? Have you encouraged them lately? That reflection is going to really help you. And then you've got to learn to engage them. You know, connect with them and let them know that you uh, notice them and you believe in them and they're important. Because when people feel important, they're going to work harder. When I was a high school kid, my friend's parents treated me like I was somebody, like I was important. And that really, really helped me to believe in myself. You're helping them believe in themselves when you engage with them and let them believe they're important. But also, we want to talk about engaging from our model, the leadership uh, engagement model. And there, you know, a lot of us, we try to dominate or withdraw. You know, most people are wired one way or the other, that when they get under pressure, they want to dominate or withdraw. Well, there's some negative emotions that go with both of those. So we have to be careful. What we really want to do, and if you look at that graphic, you will show, you'll see that on our website, and it's probably shown here in this coaching session. When you look at that, you'll see in the middle is engage. And that's what you want to do. Rather than dominate or withdraw, you want to engage someone and work through it and believe in them. And you know what's going to happen. You're going to get a much better performance, and you're all going to be happier working together and collaborate more in the future. So learn to engage, and that's also on the back of the courage card that we have. You might want to try one of those courage cards and carry it with you to coach yourself to learn to engage. So that's the two first things we want to do, and we're not going to cover everything in Chapter 9 of that book about collaboration, but we want to dialogue and learn uh, not to micromanage. We want to dialogue with things. We want to discuss things, get clarity about what are you doing and how are you doing that? Oh, that sounds good, but have you ever thought about this? And when you do that with people, they're going to perform better. And finally, I want to talk just for a second today about giving ongoing feedback, encouraging people, but also debrief. Now, in the military, debrief is very important, especially in the fighter pilot world and in the pilot world, because after every mission, we always debrief. We talked about what went right, what went well, and what didn't go so well, and how can we do it better next time. After every mission, every day, that was so important for us. You know, the leader of the Thunderbirds was doing a debrief. We brought him in to speak at a board session retreat a few years ago, and he had been a former leader of the Thunderbirds. That was the Air Force's, uh, you know, like the Blue Angels Thunderbirds. And he said, in every... In every debrief we had, which whether it was a practice or a mission or a performance, is we talked about it and we had 
we do weren't perfect. You know, we look perfect from the ground, but you know, if we were 70 to 80 percent perfect, that was a really good day. And so we had to learn to debrief, and that was so important. I want to encourage you to debrief. Another friend of mine has got a book on debriefing, so you can see that probably on our website. Debrief and work through it. Understand what's working, what's not. And then out of all of this, you've got to be courageous. You know, you've got to really engage with courage. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your people. But you've got to be uh, courageous enough to accept things that you're being vulnerable. You're owning things where you haven't come through. And you can demonstrate that to others. And they're going to learn to be courageous and to take ownership and to be vulnerable too. Well, that's enough for this month. Well, look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you so much. And just remember, coach yourself, be courageous, and engage with others. Take care and God bless.